Master Your Mindset Radio, episode 116. Welcome to Master Your Mindset Radio, the show where we empower you to discover your true self before the world told you differently. Now for your host, Elizabeth Nader. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is inspired as it usually is by a conversation I recently had. And in this case, it was with my oldest son, who's a senior in high school. And he was looking back on his high school years and we were talking about the things he loved and the things he didn't love so much, but overall how much he adored his school. And he brought up some regrets. He talked about things that he wished he would have done or opportunities that he wished he would have taken more advantage of. And it got me thinking about regrets and how in talking to an almost 18-year-old, we still end up on the subject of regrets because It's just a common human experience. It's not just older people. It's not just people in my age group or people in their 30s or 40s or whatever who have regrets, but it can be at any age. And I was trying to help him with his mindset, of course, look back and see things correctly, look at all the great things, the good things, and look at the things that he thinks he missed out on and decide to look at it differently, decide to change his mindset on it. So it got me thinking, I should talk about regrets because, boy, that's just a common human experience. And the sooner we know how to deal with them, the better. So I want to talk about turning regret into self-improvement. And it was also inspired by an article that I read that had some similar ideas in it. So I want you to think about how to turn regret around and turn it in actually to self-improvement. We all have this in common. We all at one point or another, it's human nature for us to linger on feelings of regret about so many different things in our life. And the older we get, the more we can collect all of these regrets. And it's not good for us. It's not healthy. It's not good for us physically. It's not good for us from a mindset standpoint. Mentally, it keeps us back. It's not something that we want to be pervasive in our life, but it is there and it's not uncommon. So we have to learn how to deal with it. Regret tends to be linked with a negative mindset. Someone who's feeling uh, constantly some sense of regret, they tend to look at things negatively. They look at the choices negatively. The first clue I will give you is there is a simple shift here, which is you can choose. You can choose to think, I regret the past, or you can simply choose to think the choices that I make today will affect the regrets I have in 10 years. In other words, take the opportunity to move forward and look forward and decide that you're going to do things in your life to minimize regrets that you have in 10 years. You will feel that you have more control. You will feel more positive. You have a choice to drop that negative mindset so that you can actually recognize that you do have control over a lot of things and they're all focused on your choices. So you can choose to make different choices. So that's the first thing that we have to agree on, I think, is that instead of looking back at what's happened that you have no influence on, decide that you can make a change going forward. But using our regrets as self-improvement is really about using them to motivate us. And that's one way. We recognize that when we live with the pain of regrets, that as long as you're here living and breathing on this earth, you still have a chance to move forward to lessen the regrets you have in your life to take the opportunity to do that. So the first step towards, I think, the idea that your regrets can actually motivate you is to go through an exercise with them, to begin to pick them apart and analyze them and use them in a different way. So rather than ignoring them, I think it's a better idea to acknowledge the regrets, acknowledge what you're feeling. It can be really a heavy feeling to be in a place of regret. And especially as you're mulling it over, but sort of not willing to admit to yourself that you're feeling this regret, it just leaves you in a never, never land. I think it's okay to say, I'm feeling regrets right now. To acknowledge them, don't ignore them. Take time to notice how it makes you feel. Take time to recognize what it does to you from a mental standpoint, from a physical standpoint. Understand the effect of you thinking about that regret and focusing on that regret, what it does to your emotions. 
and begin to recognize all of that. So like they say, with anything, the first step is admission, right? Admitting it, recognizing it. So let's go ahead and say, I have regrets and here they are. This is what I'm struggling with. And look at how it's affecting me. How am I coping with it? Recognize it, be aware of it. You move from that now to decide to interrupt your obsessing over that regret. So you're recognizing the regret, you know you're obsessing over it, you know that you understand how you cope with it and often not so well in some cases. So now you can learn to stop a regret to spiraling out of control. You can stop the obsessing. Here's the thing about regrets. You may not think of them that way, but they tend not to just pop in your mind and leave. They tend to stay around and they tend to make you obsess over them. You may have never used that word re- related to a regret, but if you if you think about that thought long enough and you turn it over in your mind and you see it from different angles, you're obsessing over it. That's what you're doing. So rather than allow that to happen, let's interrupt those thoughts. And I talk about that a lot. You have the ability to do that. You have the ability to interrupt the thoughts that you're having and say, I don't want to have that thought anymore. So you've recognized the regrets, you understand what they're doing to you, and you decide to interrupt the obsessing. Whatever it takes to do that, whether you need to go work out, whether you need to go watch a movie, whether you need to do something where you can't think about anything else but that thing. I remember when I used to ride horses and I used to jump. Um, used to do a uh, hunt, hunt and jump seat and we would focus so hard on what the horse is doing and, and what the trainer was telling me to do, where every muscle was. And I always used to say that when you ride a horse, when you're really learning how to do it, you can't think about anything else. You literally can't. There is no space in your mind because you have to focus on what you're telling that horse, how your positions, what your muscles are doing. And I think one of the reasons that why it is such an amazingly relaxing exercise to ride a horse and to learn how to do that is because all these thoughts in your life get pushed out. All your to-do lists are gone, all the regrets that you're obsessing over, all of the worries you have, everything has to leave for that time. And it allows your brain a break. So find something that that interrupts the obsessing over that regret, something that will stop your mind from that constant circle that you've created. Now, once you've done that, you're in a better place. Now you can take a healthy look at that regret and revisit it from a little bit of a distance. And the reason why is because you've got to change how you're thinking about it. You've no, you're no longer obsessing over it. It's not affecting you so much physically and mentally. You can stand back and look at that regret. How are you going to turn it around for yourself? How are you going to turn it into self-improvement? One of the most important things is to decide that everything in your life can be viewed from a different perspective. That everything has positive value, every experience. If you agree to that, then you can focus on that situation that created that regret and make a determination to find what's positive in it and make a determination to see it from a different perspective. It's uh, it's something that's harder to do when you're emotionally tied into it. So you've had to interrupt the obsessing over the regret to do this, but you can take a position where you can look at it from a distance almost and say, all right, what in what happened here is positive? How do I look at this situation that causes regret from a different experience? And if you focus on something positive from it, I don't care how small it is, you can begin to pivot from the negative impact of that regret, you can begin to change the regret story in your mind that now it becomes something else that you tell yourself. You can't change the past. You can't change what happened, but you can change how you feel about it. And you can change the story that you tell yourself about it. And this is really a big part of this is what we tell ourselves. We put ourselves in our own prison in our mind by what we say. I I say often, don't believe everything you tell yourself because we tell ourselves lies all the time. So you have to interrupt that thinking and you have to choose what story you're going to tell about that experience. Another thing to do is talk to yourself like you talk to a friend. Would you really beat a friend up, someone you care about a, a past regret? You wouldn't. In fact, think about the times you've talked to friends about what's happened in their lives, if they're if they're struggling with something, if they're having a regret. Most people, if they're a good friend, will find something positive, will listen, and then find a way to change a perspective that their friend has on that situation. 
to change the way they look at it, to try to bring something out of it that is a positive. And yet we don't do that for ourselves. For whatever reason, we don't do that in our own world, but we're happy to do that for people we care about. So talk to yourself like you talk to a friend, a good friend. Be kind enough to yourself to be able to give yourself that perspective. The other thing that you can do is to use this regret that you're feeling to clarify what matters to you. So when you're feeling that deep regret and that emotion, it will allow you to examine what is truly important to you. You can begin to see why am I feeling such profound regret and work backwards from that to see what values are tied up in those feelings. And that will give you an opportunity for personal growth. So if you, for example, have regret over speaking angrily at someone that you care about and you just can't seem to stop doing it and you have regret about it, rather than just obsess over the fact that you keep doing that, look at it and say, all right, what in this bothers me so much because I have a value that's tied up in this that I actually don't want to be an angry person. I actually care about how I treat people. I actually want to have positive interactions. I want to deal with my emotions better. So rather than focusing on the damage done, now you can focus on the fact that, hey, I have this value. This is who I am. That makes me a good person and I'm going to operate from that value. So it's a little shift and a little bit of a trick in your mind. But rather than looking back on that experience with regret, you can say, wow, I have a great value inherent in me that makes that situation uncomfortable for me and therefore gives me an opportunity to change it going forward. And no matter what in all of this, what you keep hearing in this kind of last point to this is to take action, do something. Because our thoughts, our thought life have a way of taking over if we don't control them. They have a way of trapping us in a constant battle or circular reasoning or circular thinking if we don't decide to interrupt them and take action and take control and decide how we're going to feel about something. It's it's a it's a exercise, it's a constant uh, commitment to deciding to be in control of the things that we think about. So if you don't take action, you will simply be victim to all of your thoughts and your thought life begins to rule you. Your emotions begin to rule you and you will live in a state of regret and in a state of despair and in a state of no hope if you don't take control. And I talk about in my book, the Japanese art called uh, Kintsugi. I hope I pronounce that right. I, I never know if I pronounce that right, but it means literally translated golden repair. And I talk about in the book as it relates to repairing broken things that in the Japanese uh, thought that when you repair something, it becomes more valuable, right? But the idea in that is not only does it become more valuable, but you're actually taking action, it is a active thing that you're doing and repairing something that the imperfections are part of your history. But when you repair and look back and repair what you can, it brings more beauty to you. It brings more beauty to the situation. It makes you more value, valuable. Listen, some of our regrets are large. Some of them are smaller, but you can take steps to remedy them. You can take steps to deal with what continues to haunt you, the things that you obsess over. It's not uh, erasing them all together. It's not about denying the past. It's about pursuing a solution and a way of thinking and a decision to see your life differently using wisdom from your past experiencing experiences, using them to make you a better person, to see your values, to commit to change and growth, and to know that the choices you make tomorrow are the regrets you will or will not live with a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now. You do have the control. You do have the ability to change things. So use regret as self-improvement and decide that you're going to actively work on those things in your life so you are no longer a prisoner to the regrets and the thoughts that you have constantly. Use them to motivate you. It will make all the difference. And promise me that you will teach this and share this podcast with at least another person that you care about because all of us have this in common in some way. Have a great week, guys. 
Thank you for listening to Master Your Mindset Radio. Before you go, please visit ElizabethNader.com to learn more about the Mindset Maven and how she is guiding high performers to map their mindset to their message so they can effectively express who they are and why their ideas should win. Looking forward to seeing you online.